Welcome back. So, um, just uh, running down my notes. In this section, everything is in this folder in the Google Drive. Uh, there's a dissertation. There's a journal paper. And it's important to note that these two have slightly different assumptions. So I'm, I document that in my notes on this code revision process I went through. Um, the, uh, the subfolders in here. There's a MathCAD document that kind of looks like this when it's converted to HTML just to view it. So this was a, a non-equilibrium model uh, that Lionel was working on. Um, what's in the other folders here? Correct code is just an extracted. I extracted this code from a zip file that I got um, from either Dr. Fellin or, or Yishpal that contains the actual code, the original code, I should say. Extracted the original code. So what I did then was I copied that folder. I um, added a repository so that I could track my changes. And I started making my updates so that the code would be a little bit prettier, easier to follow. Let me um, pull that up then. So imagine I opened up MATLAB. And I go into the script model folder, look to absorption code. So I'm going to try and find which are the main files. OK, so I'm going to start by looking at the original files. Solution 9 is the main entry point here. And I'm not sure why we came up with all these numbers. Maybe it was an equation number at some point. Uh, the heart of this file is a loop. Uh, this is for a parametric study. We did a variety of parametric studies and then plotted them out for the, the paper and the dissertation. But during the loop, um, he's trying to converge. And this is uh, kind of a, a convergence criteria. Each pass through this is going through one loop of the cycle and then comparing the temperature at the beginning and the end of the cycle. So it's, con it's looping this until the temperature falls within some convergence criteria. And then it's, it's saying that's the steady state um, process. So then he, he calculates all the properties needed for the, the system performance at steady state. Uh, these files implement uh, a, a time uh, domain integration of the um, adsorption or desorption process, for example, equation 29. So there's a lot of notes in here. Basically, this is some equation from the dissertation being implemented in code. And it looks like I've closed all my files to show you, um, but it should correspond to some equation number like that. And similarly, this adsorption integrates this. So these are ordinary differential equations. It's just a rate of change equation that's saying, what is the temperature rate of change? Uh, and then all these are global variables. There's also a maple file in here, which is similar to um, Mathematica, if you've ever used. I used to use it a lot. Uh, this is kind of showing how are the equations derived to put the, I think this was some kind of a fit for the vapor pressure, perhaps, of water as a function of temperature using some, some equation, polynomial, I don't know. Uh, that, that's involved in the rate equations. So this kind of explains where some of the numbers 
come from, as you might call them, magic numbers in those equations. So just to clarify, these are looping over the cycle, and there's, there has to be a transition between desorption and adsorption steps. There's always something in between each one. And what Gupta does in the code was not exactly what I expected. So what happens at the end of this integrating the desorption step is the, the setting of the um, temperature for the, the next step. And that gets pulled in somewhere. So this is always specifying this is the time. This is the, the beginning temperature, the initial condition. So when we go over here, this is fed in as the initial condition here. Now that's not what I expected, that, that he assumes the temperature is the same. So I'm going to put in here some constant temperature process, an absor adsorption, and then another constant temperature process. Going uh, after desorption, desorption occurs at a high pressure. Adsorption occurs at a low pressure. So what happened um, between desorption and adsorption is a depressurization. Um, and then this was kind of an assumption that opening the valves, switching the valve somehow causes this pressure change. And I believe the experiment showed, <clears throat> if you look into the, the paper, the dissertation, uh, that this process was done too abruptly. There should have been a, um, a cooling off period with the valves closed between uh, desorption and adsorption, and then a, a heating up period. So we'll say translation. And uh, reopen this file that I closed here. So if you read through here, my favorite piece of the literature right now is this Gusenkamp and Rodermacher. Um, he has some really great books on, on heat pumps. And Gusenkamp was a, a dissertation. I don't know how to say his name properly, but it's a, it's a great dissertation to read. It really explains the, the process steps. And it's showing here this transition between the adsorption and the desorption steps. There is both a, a time when the pressure is changing and then the temperature is changing as well. So I think that the, the original assumption in the Gupta model was not physically representative of the process. And what I did when I, I went back and modified it is to, um, let me see if I can show kind of, so this is in adsorption ratio versus temperature space. Um, well, here, this shows very clearly. This is the desorption. This is a, um, some kind of a depressurization uh, at constant adsorbed ratio. So that's what I think is happening, I believe. Um, the, the original model maybe was at a constant temperature, and I don't think that's very good. I think we should do, assuming that the adsorbed ratio is, is constant. So another thing I should point out, um, these, uh, these functions call on a couple of um, functions that were missing in the zip file or uh, not not included with some external library. <clears throat> so I put in something that would make the code run as kind of a temporary, this doesn't look right at all. Um, but in the, the next video, I'm going to talk about how I re-implemented this code entirely.